Undercurrent sponsored by John Hughes in Victoria Park. Choose your station before you choose your program. Absolutely. Welcome back to Undercurrent, which this week finds me down here at the Barrack Street Jetty. Well, Jasmine Stewart spoke to John Button about a brand new project called the Innocence Project, which aims to release 100 prisoners from incarceration early each year. Can society handle the truth that they've been responsible for putting so many innocent people away in prison? Angry? frustrated um, and eager and passionate to change, to change it for the pure reason that to make any, how do I say, to, to make my, my life meaningful I've got to do something with what's happened to me to help others or else my whole life has been a waste. A 38 year sentence, not a five year prison sentence, but 38 years, and it has totally destroyed my life, as it destroys everybody's life who is wrongfully convicted. The Innocence Project is a post-appeal review service offered to people who, claim, who have actually been found guilty of certain crimes, but claim to be factually innocent. Initially, in the short term, really, it's to get innocent people out of prison. Um, we can't just leave them sitting there while we work on the principles. We have to get them out as soon as we possibly can. And the second arm to that is that we have to make the public aware that it happens and try and get public pressure and media pressure to bear upon the government to change the system and to make sure it doesn't happen again. Recent Australian cases such as um, Andrew Mallard and also John Button show that um, Australia isn't immune to wrongful conviction. There's definite need for this project. We've only been operating for a few years and we still have had over 100 applicants. 50, 60 innocent people in prison, even one. It's wrong. Why can't we do something? Why, do, why don't we want to do anything about it? The selection process is essentially an applicant will apply to the project. Um, and make a claim of factual innocence. If that claim is, um, is one of factual innocence, then we will look at it. Um, if it's not, for example, if it's a legal technicality, then we don't look at those cases. If the evidence isn't there to show that they're innocent, it goes nowhere, they stay in prison. And we're not about just getting anyone out of prison. We only want the innocent ones out, not the guilty ones. Uh, students aren't actually trying to determine innocence, they approach the task from a very neutral perspective. So um, what they're looking for is new or fresh evidence. So if there is a, something that would suggest that the conviction was unsafe. They also learn the knowledge and the skills they need to make sure that when they're in professional practice, they don't perpetuate the errors that have occurred in the system. What it does is we're going to have a different calibre of lawyer and judge and politicians in the future because of, of this. We need to move to a model maybe similar to the UK where they have a criminal cases review commission and cases there are reviewed post appeal in order to um, determine the safeness of the conviction. Oh, more could always be done. It's the first step, a massive important step. Um, I'm extremely proud of, of, of the, the University of e ECU, extremely proud of, of the young student lawyers that are working on it. I think in the very near future all the universities here with a, a law faculty will have an innocent project attached to it as, as, as they have up at Edith Town. I'm having discussions with other universities at the moment. Um, we want all students, all law students, to work through what the consequences are when, when they get it wrong, as lawyers, as prosecutors, as judges. And if they realise what the consequences are, that's where we have a different calibre of lawyer. We might even get a lawyer with a heart. Well, it may sound too far-fetched to be true, but this week Sarah Miller investigates how some workers are using synthetic urine to pass those all-important health and safety medical tests.
The use of synthetic urine has become a common way for WA workers, particularly in the mining and construction industries, to pass drug tests. The synthetic substance, including brands such as Quick Fix and Ultra Clean, is able to pass most drug screenings because it contains a byproduct of muscle breakdown found in real urine. We spoke to the Chem Centre who have been researching these products. Synthetic urine is exactly what the name says. It's a liquid, generally yellow in colour, and it is made or composed of uh, chemicals which mimic uh, those found in uh, natural urine. Well, there's a whole range of testing that can be done. Uh, simple testing like pH uh, or the acidity of the urine uh, can be done. Uh, if that's out of whack, well, that's probably the end of the story. But the, the products are far more uh, sophisticated than that now. Um, generally, the process involves urine sampling. So either by instant test cups or by providing a sample to the laboratory. Um, quite commonly the process is done as part of the pre-employment medical but very often also we're asked to go out and do random screens on the, the employees, blanket screens of the whole workforce or even call kinetic screeners out to, uh, in response to an incident. Because the tests are supervised within the clinics and on site um, it's quite difficult for them to get away with it. Um, there's also a, a test for temperature as well as one of our adulteration tests. Well the synthetic urine obviously will beat the test so um the person who, uh, upon being notified to have the test, uh, if they've got sufficient time, they can get the product, uh, use the product, and if not supervised properly, uh, thereby uh, beating the test and uh, continuing to abuse drugs in the workplace. Fake urine is cold, if you like, it's at room temperature. One of the uh, parameters of urine that they monitor is the temperature of the urine, which should be at body temperature. So when they go into the cubicle to have their test, what they do is they take their fake urine and they put it in their pocket and lo and behold they have a heat pack which they uh, open and uh, also put in their pocket and at the appropriate juncture they take out the sample and check that the temperature is correct and therefore then tip it into the receptacle and hand it to the, to the supervisor. We can list the suspicion um, that something's awry with the test and we then do further testing within the laboratory to see whether it is human and whether it is the right temperature. Um, it is possible for it not to be detected. A spokesperson from Rio Tinto refused to share information about the mining company's drug testing methods, but reassured that their testing practices were consistent with Australian standards. Of course, the, the more tests you do, to prove it's fake, the greater the expense. So uh, employers are a little bit reluctant to do it on a uh, large scale because of the expense. You can't just rely on drug testing alone. Um, drug testing has to be part of a broader program. Um, what you actually want to do is create a culture where people actually don't take risks in relation to drug use in the workplace, that they don't see it as an invasion of personal privacy, they actually see it as a safety issue. And that then urine testing becomes a small part of an overall strategy of education, prevention, uh, workforce uh, programs that create safety in the workplace that the workforce own. If you don't do that, you're always going to have a system that people, some people try and get around. Aussie Detox in South Australia is one of the many companies that sell the synthetic urine online. Manager Joe Jones told Undercurrent that the product is sold for party pranks and he does not believe that it could successfully pass a drug test. I'm Sarah Miller, reporting for Undercurrent. This week, John Hammond sat down at the Court Wine Bar with Steve Zelensky to talk about his often colourful career. Steve Zelensky, um, you're someone that has a very colourful history, everybody knows you in Perth. In terms of um, what you do, your business raunchy promotions, um, do you get much criticism from people about running an organisation which hires girls out to perform in hotels? Yes, we, we get a lot of pro and negative um, 
criticism, but a lot of people don't understand the industry and they, they say things to me that aren't true. They should really research it and have a look on our website and then I find out more about the company. The girls are wearing basically what they, more than what they were wearing down the beach or Cottesloe Beach. You see more down Cottesloe Beach than you would behind a, a, a hotel in Western and that, Australia. And that was something I was going to ask you about. Do you find it a little bit hypocritical that police would charge the girls for obscene behaviour when you have shows like Puppetry of the Penis at the Regal Theatre? Well, that's true, John, because this state is the only state that we have these, uh, a section of the Liquor Act that's been imposed by the former Labor government in 1987, 88 it was, and uh, Pam Beggs put it on there and it hasn't been removed by either government. And it's a waste of police time because uh, there's so much happening out there that should be policed and, and they're worrying about things like G-strings behind bars. Steve, over the years you've been a pretty passionate fighter for things that you believe in. What are some of the things that really annoy you about our legal system and our judicial system? Well, what frustrates not only me but a lot of pu the public out there is the fact that you can be victimised by a police officer or charged by bureaucrats and you defend your innocence. You go to court and you spend tens of thousands of dollars and then just before your court case the police just drop it for no reason at all. Oh, we haven't got enough evidence but it's cost you forty-five to fifty thousand dollars defending your innocence until that time and you don't get one cent back from the Crown. And that actually happened to you, didn't it, on an insider trading charge where correct. the case was dropped and you were unable to recoup one cent of your legal fees. Correct. And that's not justice as far as I'm concerned. That's an, a very, very sad act of our legal system because you get people out there that have mortgages that can't defend themselves and they just plead guilty. And that's why you get a lot of people pleading guilty to the point where they're not guilty and they just give wear it. And Steve, I mean, you're in the business of uh, hiring out young, beautiful women to hotels for events. Do you have a young, beautiful woman on your side at the moment? No, I, I don't, John, but I, I um, at this present time, I'm having a few problems in that department, but uh, we won't go there. But as far as, um, yeah, there's a, we, we hire out not only young, beautiful women, we've, uh, some of the girls there are quite educated and, and we have different clientele out there that would hire them uh, simply for communication. It's not just about looking good, it's about looking good, being able to handle yourself in a conversation and also talking to different aspects of society. And Steve, what do you do outside of your work in Raunchy Promotions? What other things do you do to keep occupied? Oh, I do property development and also share trading and, and involved in a new company called Biosis, which is, um, we've just um, experimented with a German product, which um, is a green, green factor. In other words, it um, turns stale water into fresh water. Well, that'll be pretty popular in Western Australia right now. Already trying it in Port Hedland and a few other places, so it's looking pretty good. And pretty much over the last few years, Steve, you've been based in the city of Perth. Is Perth your true love, your true home? West Australia's got many beautiful places. I'm in Perth at the moment because of business commitments and things like that. But uh, yeah, it's great. Perth is a great city and, and I think we're very lucky to be here when you travel around other parts of the world, especially even in the eastern states. You look at Perth and you think, what a beautiful city we're living in. And Steve, I'm not expecting an answer to this question, but you're a man that doesn't like to reveal your age, aren't you? Well, I don't think, over 45, I don't think a man should reveal his so age. So we know you're at least over 45. That's correct, yes. <laughs> we'll leave it at that, will we? <laughs>